name's Philip Johnson. I'm an Associate Professor at University College Dublin and a visiting Senior Fellow at Queen Mary University of London. And I'm also the author of the Private International Law in International Commercial Litigation course for the London International Programme. And in this short film, what I'll try and do is introduce the sorts of things you might study if you decide to take this course. Now, the course is divided into four sections. The first section, Section A, looks at the largely theoretical aspects of private international law. In contrast to many other areas of law, theory has remained and indeed continues to play a very, very important part, particularly in the United States. Now, because the course takes a comparative approach, looking largely at uh, the law in the European Union and in the United States, it's very important to understand the different conceptual bases that exist in the EU and in the US. And they have, one has a very strong rule-based approach, the European Union, and the other has a much more policy-based approach. So in Section A, you'll look at those different approaches and the different ways that private international law rules are derived. In Section B, you address the first substantive part of private international law, the rules relating to jurisdiction. Now, this is whether or not a court is seized for matter. In other words, if you are a French person who wants to sue a British company, can you sue them in France? Or in what circumstances can you sue them in France? That's really what the first course is about. And there are, there are particular rules relating to different aspects of uh, the types of action to determine where you can bring your claim. And this can be really, really important because, of course, you might want to bring your claim locally, you might want to bring it to another jurisdiction, or you might want to, more importantly, avoid going to a particular case. If you're a defendant, would you want to be sued in France or in your local court down the road in London? These are the subject of Section B. Section C is the thing that often trips people up in private international law, which is the rules relating to applicable law. In other words, if you bring your case in London, what law will that court apply? It's often thought, wrongly, that if you're in an English court, they'll only apply English law. If you're in a French court, they'll only apply French law. What actually happens is they, tr they apply certain choice of law rules to decide which law to apply. And this can be very, very important in large commercial negotiations, as well as more smaller day-to-day -day commercial disputes. It can also be quite important if you go on holiday and you have an accident when you're away. But th that third part is not something we'll look at particularly in the course. But it is important to understand that the rules of applicable law are important to all aspects of international commercial uh, litigation. And international commercial litigation, of course, is, is something which arises from many different international commercial deals. The final section, Section D, relates to the enforcement of judgments. It's all very well that you can persuade a French court to bring a claim in relation to your dispute, and it's all very well that you get a judgment in France. But if your defendant is based in the United Kingdom, the question is, can you actually get your judgment or your French judgment enforced in the UK? And that's a relatively straightforward question now but it hasn't always been the, the case. And it also depends on the nature of the judgment. What's most important about this, of course, is not just between France and the UK, but between the United Kingdom and other jurisdictions, or indeed between the United States and the United Kingdom. A classic example is in England, it's very easy to get very high libel awards, very good damages awarded because you've had your character defamed. But the United States won't enforce those at all. They take a view it's contrary to their constitutional requirements. So that's the sorts of thing you'll look at in Section D. The course as a whole tries to take you through those various elements of private international law. The theory, jurisdiction, applicable law, and then finally enforcement of judgments. And this is something which is done across a range of legal instruments. Unlike many other areas of English law, it is now something which is largely, although not quite exclusively, harmonised across the EU. So you'll be referring to things like the Brussels Regulation, which has recently been recast. You'll have the Rome 1 and Rome 2 regulations. There's also a few international treaties and conventions thrown in there as well. So the course takes a very international perspective to what is a very international subject. And I hope you consider doing one or more of the sections.